I'm Stephen Hill. We're here at M2 with Michael Stipe, uh, who, who picked all the videos this hour. He picked a yep. whole bunch of stuff. We're going to be talking about those and about the uh, new CD. Oh, where'd you get the name up from? Off a cardboard box. Really? Just... We, you know, we, we were desperate for titles and uh, it happens every record and we had five minutes to pick it. So we, there was a cardboard box and we just said, we'll call it up, this side up. Well, that begs the question, where'd Automatic for the People come from? Uh, there's a restaurant in Athens where we live, and uh, the guy that runs it, his, his like phrase is automatic for the people. It's on a sign outside the restaurant, so we went to him and asked him if we could use it, and he cool. said, yeah. Right. I had to put my boxes somewhere near your house so I can get so I can possibly name the title of your next album. Our next record will be called Stephen. I appreciate that. With very. a B. <laughs> oh, huh? that hurts me and my mom. Um, now, you've been asked... You got a record out. You're gonna tour. You're gonna tour. You said no tour. You no tour. So that begs the question. Are we you gonna, gonna tour? tour? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're kind of, we're kind of, well, we're we're in serious discussion about going out uh, in the summertime for maybe a month in the U.S. and maybe a month in Europe, but nothing set yet. Okay. Would you, if, you, if it were just up to you, would you like to go out and tour? Yeah, yeah. I'd love to do it. I don't want to do it for a year and a half ever again. You know, like travel the world. Uh, it becomes a little bit too rote. You know, too much like a job. But to do a month here and a month there, that'd be really fun. Cool. cool. I and like performing a lot. Do you, uh, do you find yourself creative on the road while you're performing? What do you mean creative? Do you find even when you're not on stage yeah, or, or in your hotel room? Mostly sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty exhausting. No songwriting that time, during that, during that time? Mm, well, we wrote, you know, we wrote one whole album on the road. Right. Um, and it came off really good. But... This whole record we wrote while you know while we were just kind of, I don't know, we were drinking a lot, sleeping not very much. Cool. Tell me about the uh, Smiths. You picked uh, "Girlfriend in a Coma." I just think you know it's not in the top ten of great pop songs, uh, like what would be that Dolly Parton song uh, "I Will Always Love You," sung by her. And um, not feeling Whitney's version. Benny and the Jets is right up there, and. She's a Rainbow by the Rolling Stones. So that's a great song. Benny and the Jess is a love song? It's not a love song, but it's a great oh. pop song. I got you. Girlfriend in the Coma might be in the top 20. We're here at M2 with Michael Stipe, uh, who picked all the videos this hour. The most recent CD is up. I am devastated because Mr. Stipe has just revealed that Frampton comes alive. Recorded in the studio. That hurts me. That... <laughs> even, the, even the part with the voice box and. The whole thing, yeah. <sighs> Next thing you're going to tell me, the characters on Sesame Street aren't real. They are real. Have you ever been there? No. But you were, right? They're really real. How, how, was that fun? Was that actually fun doing that? Was kinda, it? You know, the amazing thing is that the guys that are, you know, they're standing like this and they have their arm up, like shoved up the, what would be their butts if Muppets had butts. <laughs> and the guys that are doing it are the most, like, uh, the most, like, uh, it, it's not the type of people that you would expect to be puppeteers. It's like one of the guys is uh, this kind of biker guy with a big belly and he's got the leather hat on and Harley Davidson t-shirt and he's got a little voice like this as soon as the camera rolls and then he becomes this big gruff biker guy again and that's pretty cool that's unbelievable yeah now, they, they were they were they were good and what did you, you you did a version of we did uh, we did a kind of a kind of a 90s version of shiny happy people specifically for um, Sesame Street called for Lori furry happy furry monsters happy furry and they get to sigh, and they get, you know, you know how they collapse. They like, they get to sigh, and they get to be sad, and then they get happy, and it was fun. Cool, cool. cool. I had a terrible day that day, but it was still fun. Yeah. Well, you should, this is the kind of thing that picks you up on a terrible day. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. yeah. Cool. Tell me about Man in the Moon, the movie. Uh, are you involved in the movie? I know it's taken from obviously a title from the, from the song. Yeah, they took the title from the song, and. Um, the guy, Bob Zmuda, who was Andy Kaufman's best friend, told me that our writing that song is actually what kind of inspired interest in Andy Kaufman again and kind of led to the movie being written and then, and then being made. So we were around a lot while they were shooting it, and I, I know Milos Foreman from before he's directing it. I know Courtney Love. Um, I saw Jim Carrey in character. That'll be the phone. I'm not here. <laughs> Thanks. I saw Jim Carrey in, in character as Andy Kaufman, and it was really one of the most extraordinary, you know, uh, transformations in, uh, that I've ever seen. So I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be in some way kind of connected to the film. Hopefully, um, and maybe my band is going to be scoring it. 
Cool. I hope that happens. And tell me, tell me a little bit about the video. Making the video, mm -hmm. I wanted to do a video where I was like Steve McQueen, you know, with a cowboy hat walking through the desert and being really cool and jumping on 18-wheeler trucks and stuff like that, and have Andy Kaufman in there um, mm -hmm. with me. So we, you know, I, I went to Peter Kerr, the director, and I said, make me into an iconic cowboy legend like Steve McQueen or uh, Cool Hand Luke, and that's how this video happened. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, last question, Bill Wait, Berry. I was, I was throwing back to the, okay, I know, but I had to, did Bill Berry really drive 18 wheeler? He drove the 18 wheeler. He really did? He was going too fast and when I jumped up on it, you can see in the video that I slam against the truck really hard and uh, I, there's an exhaust thing on the side of the truck that I actually dented with my arm and I, ha I had a scar for about six months uh, with, with the little holes where the, because it was really hot. So it, I got branded by that truck. Here with Michael Stipe, who's uh, picking all the videos that you've seen and will see for a little while. Uh, most recent CD is up. Title taken from a cardboard box. Yep. Love that. Uh, all right, some of the videos you picked. Bjork, Hunter, tell me about that one. I just like Bjork a lot. I think she's, I, I actually turned to her one night in a nightclub and I said, there are a lot of people who I know, who I tell all the time that they inspire me a great deal because they do great work. And I don't know you that well. I'd only met her a couple of times. Well, I've only met her a couple of times over the course of 14 or 15 years. But I said, I don't know you that well. But I just want you to know that I think the work that you do is really inspiring. And, and it's challenging to me as a lyricist and as an artist. And she bought me a bottle of champagne. Now, that's interesting because I'm sure people come up to you and say that all the time. How does, how does that make you feel when people come up to you and say that? I love hearing that. You hear something like that from... Yeah, I don't know. You hear from someone who does the same thing that you do, and you know what it's like to have to do that. And not that writing songs is the, the, the hardest thing in the world, but it is kind of specific, you know. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I think she was really honored. We had a, we had a nice time with the champagne. <laughs> we drank it. And Placebo Pure Morning you also picked. Placebo, I just, I, I got to know those guys um, uh, two summers ago when I was in London shooting Velvet Goldmine, and they're involved in that. And... Uh, um, I just think they're a really great band. I saw them perform in Rome, I think, uh, last summer uh, in front of 30,000 people. Mm. They're a great band. Cool. Foxy, yeah. Foxy Video. Foxy Video, and another, yeah. another great band, uh, which you've performed on stage with at the Tibetan Freedom Concert, Radiohead. Oh yeah, they're great, they're Foxy. Everybody's, fo I only like Foxy bands, that's, that's it. Yeah, I re this video, um, it actually kind of pissed me off because it was so good, and I, I, I called Tom York and told him so. I was just about to ask, and, is, is there any video you ever thought that you should have made? I'll get back, I'm sorry. Well, there's several that I've stolen from and turned into my own thing, and, and it worked out pretty well. Like, I think one of the ones that I picked is The Emperor's New Clothes, the Sinead O'Connor video. And the whole hand movement thing from Losing My Religion, I, I lifted directly from that video because uh, I thought she was so, well, she's, she's like uber fox. I, I was really interrupted. You were telling me about calling Tom York. That's rude. My apologies. Here with Michael Stipe, who's picking the videos that you've seen and will see. Um, we want to cover a lot of things in a short period of time, so I was hoping we could do a speed round. Latex gloves. Um, my doctor. Ow. Yeah, I know. I just read it up there. Uh, what is that about? What's that? Latex gloves? Oh, well, CPR. For, uh, CPR. CPR. Stuff. And okay, got you it. Got CPR. In a bar, you got have you have everything. Then you got it here. Okay. But I was ready to play if you wanted to play. I'm, Speed round. But now it's you. Uh, first record you ever bought? Elvis Presley's Double Trouble. And Haley Mills' uh, The Parent Trap. <laughs> Strangest place you ever wrote lyrics? Next. <laughs> Shiny Happy People. Uh, furry, what, what is it? Happy Furry Monsters. <laughs> the last thing you laughed really loud at? I'm kind of a quiet laugher, to tell you the truth. The last thing you laughed really quietly at. No, 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 I don't know. No, no. uh, I saw Holly Hunter on the Actors Studio, and her her choice of best word when she was in a speed round like this with that guy that does the interviews. Her choice of, of favorite word was really good. And best record last year that few others heard that you loved. It made me laugh. Best what? Best record you heard last year that few others heard. I'm still listening to Utah Saints. I think they're an amazing band. 
Nobody likes them. Bill Barry. You're playing them too, oh. right? You're going to play Utah Saints? Yes. Along with the Sinead O'Connor video that I love so much? <laughs> We're doing whatever you ask us to. Thank you. Yes, Utah Saints. Great. Yeah. Love that. Bill Barry. Hey. Andy Kaufman. Um, his brother came to the set with the original plastic booger that Andy would keep up his nose when he was talking to business people. <laughs> and it was in the original bag and he showed it to me. <laughs> and I was, I was like kind of horrified, and, but I was honored to be included. Now that's something to happen. All right, that's the end of the speed round. You have, is that cool? All right, end of the speed round. Did I pass? Yes. Thank you. Flying Sorry. colors. Uh, let's talk about Lotus, the, the new, new uh, single and the new video. Yeah. Um, Stefan Sednui, the director. Great guy. How ch how'd you choose him? I, I've wanted to work with him since uh, 1991, and we've talked a lot, and uh, this seemed like the perfect. I, you know, the song to me is really hallucinogenic, and the lyrics are kind of swirling, and... Um, he seemed like the perfect person to, to make a video for the song. So uh, inspired by the paintings of Francis Bacon, uh, he kind of set me up in a studio and we stripped, you know, I stripped to the waist and they covered me with this translucent powder and they shot me like an alien, kind of. And I just kind of rolled around all day. It was do you, really fun. Do you, do you find that he or any other director brings something to the song or bring something out of the song that maybe you didn't know was there before? He just understood, you know, he understood the song immediately. And from the work that he's done with Bjork, who we love, and 